that. Uh, I'm just a little suspicious. I suppose it's possible. Okay, anyways, let me see. This is, I think this is where the batteries go. Yeah. Really slick the way that this guy did this, man. He's, I don't recognize the loot here. It's cool though. Yeah, so, I mean, it's, it's, it's uh, yeah, it's this cat. I don't remember what his name is. Okay. Something. My nails are so short I can't even. Have some keys. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's good. Yeah, I have keys too. <laughs> <laughs> but now you you pull it out. So I have to ask, where are you from, sir? Well, let's say Italy. Okay. <laughs> there is a, a long version and a short version. This and the super short Italy. This is the super short. Well, not under load. This this battery shows nine volts actually. Okay. Without any load on it, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's it's actually that. This one's a little less. Whoopsie. That's seven and a half. With no load, but we'll just be sure. We'll put fresh ones on. Want to show you my shot? Oh man, that's yeah, cool. <laughs> Pink sparkle pony. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah, headless yeah. family. With the uh, hip shot uh, thing. Is the yeah, the hip shot too. It's really solid. I found that the tuning ratio is yeah. very good for me. Oh, I love uh, headless spaces. And uh, you know, you travel really good with air airlines, everything, you know. Uh, That's the one of the things, so like, I started like, I joined a, a bigger band recently that like, you know. Yeah, when I started oh, travel extensively yeah. was the first, uh, the other thing, Really? Yeah. Okay. Fine. It's not very good. Not a very. Not. Doesn't have a great range. This. Oh, yeah, okay. I turned it on. Okay, that's good. It's a range of 50. So. Yeah, I mean it's just barely pulling anything. It's not pulling. It's not ex pulling excessive power. So this is not. That's just too. This range is either 500 microamps or 50 milliamps, and this thing pulls one and a half milliamps. So it's hard to see, <laughs> you know, exactly. Gosh, if I had a like a 10 ohm resistor, I could just measure it that way. But I don't. So, um, but looking at this, I mean it definitely is. Only pulling just a tiny bit. So I'm going to say it's probably the battery. Yeah, I maybe mean, it was not, the battery. If maybe it's not it pulling the... extra, now, now what 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 could happen, it can happen, and probably has happened before, is um, there's a ground driver in this thing that could conceivably oscillate. When it oscillates, then it would draw you know, like ultra, ultrasonic. You can hear it. But um, if it oscillates, then it would start to pull a lot of power. All right, so, I'll check it. So just it see if it, if it dies. Yeah. If it dies again, then yep. what I need to do is change this one board, and I'll just bring another one. So, big, so okay. All right. There's Don't that. But I mean, for now, I pronounce it. It's not going to hurt anybody. So. All right. Anyway, maybe just bad luck because it, uh, it used to have only one battery before. Oh, yeah. so we put two. And maybe so the, the old one was uh, one of the two was old. You know? Oh well, yeah. I mean, then it could be. But and, and remember, be. the batteries in this thing—they're you know—they're in series. So, yeah. um, so, it, it, and one of the things that happens when a battery gets old is rather than lose voltage, it 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 builds internal resistance. So you know you can measure it with a with one of these things, which puts no load on the battery, and it'll show it's got several volts. But as soon as you put a load on it, then it's then the voltage just drops to hell. And since it's in series with the battery, that's good. It's only as good as the weakest yeah. one. You know, yeah, so. it takes down the other. One. Yeah. Here. Cool. And oh, here, that's <laughs> this could be interesting. Cable lock. So one of the most iconic things that Mike is known for is the creation of the Pope preamp. Now for those that don't know, the Pope preamp is basically the signature preamp that most of the Federas come stock with. Uh, players such as Richard Boda, 
Matthew Garrison, Victor Wooten have Pope preamps in their bases, along with a ton of other players. And it has an iconic look and it has an, you know, an iconic sound and wiring. So I just wanted to sit down with Mike and ask the origin and what makes it so special. Hmm. So let's start at the beginning. It's, it's actually a really long story, but I'm going to just try to keep it as condensed as I can. Back in the mid-90s, I was really determined to find a way to make a six-string bass sound like a jazz bass. And um, I had heard that, that from an amazing bass player named Ned Mann, who unfortunately has passed away since from ALS, he had told me about Federa. And so, you know, I thought, well, I'm going to check these guys out. So I went over there and I, I, I met Joey. And, uh, and Vinny and Joey and I spent a lot of time together because he had just gotten these these new they were just starting to use those Duncan dual coil pickups right so he was just you know he was using them he wasn't sure exactly how to use them he was wiring them up you know like soap like soap bar pickups and positioning them centering them where a jazz bass pickup would be so I was you know I just I, I don't know why it just seemed logical to me I said well why don't we I had this Ken Smith bass that I had just I had like taken in my kitchen with a router, just routed a huge, <laughs> cast a huge hole in the front, so I could put pickups wherever I wanted to. So man, why don't we take a set of these things and let's just drop them on my bass? He didn't, he didn't even have uh, uh, covers for them. We had to just tape it in with like blue tape. And I said, let's put them where like so that the outer coils are where you know where they need to be, and then we could turn those inner ones on and off with a switch. I said, oh, pretty cool. So we did it, and it was like boom. There it is. Like that was kind of that was the key right there was to get just you know single coils in the right spot. Boom, and all of a sudden we were like ninety percent of the way there. And that was and, and I, I feel like that was one of the first instances that I know of where you know five or six string bases began to really function the way that that that, that four string bases had been functioning, and that the stigma of multi string bases started to go away. And it's still there, sort of, but you know it's not as bad. Anyhow, so we sort of established a level of trust through that, and they had some confidence in me. And when it came time for them to want to have a new preamp, they said, "Could you build an active circuit?" And I said, "Sure," but I, I mean, I didn't really know how to, but I knew I had the resources to find out. So I, um, I did a whole bunch of research, and I, I talked to my uncle about, you know. He's an electrical engineer, not an audio guy. And I said, hey man, you know, how do I go about this? And he's like, well, I don't know. Do you have, do you have any, any examples? So I had two or three different types of preamps that they'd given me to look at. And I said, well, let me just send these to you. So he took them and he, he, he sort of reverse engineered them. And he called me back and he says, well, these are, you know, these are basically rehashes of circuits that have been being used for years and years and National Semiconductor Handbook and all that and the op -Amp Handbook. And he, in a matter of literally like a few days, pretty much taught me what I needed to know to where I could go buy a breadboard and build a circuit. You know, so it was, I mean, he's, I credit him. He's a brilliant teacher. He just had me like understanding this stuff in no time. And of course, there's a lot to it, but I built a two band circuit and then I had to figure out how to build a three band circuit. And I, he didn't help me with that. I had to figure that out on my own. So I did. And I got a circuit that worked and I built one and we put it in a base and we sent it to Japan. And the Japanese dealer loved it, and he started ordering them. So that from that moment on, Federa started ordering preamps for me. So at that time, I was in my apartment in Brooklyn, and I'm literally like making printed circuit boards from scratch mm -hmm. with this bizarre system that I had, um, drilling them out by hand. And I mean, it was just crazy. I mean, it was nuts that I, I, I did that. I didn't even know where to get a circuit board manufactured. Ultimately, I figured all that out just little by little. I had help from some really great people. Kevin Beller at Seymour Duncan was gave me some wonderful advice. Really steered me in the right direction. And so did Walter Woods, was was a, a bit of a mentor through the whole thing too. The brilliant, you know, sort of J.D. Salinger of bass amps, right? Or Howard Hughes, I don't know. Something like that. <laughs> but so I kind of, you know, I got, got myself on a path to where I was understanding how <laughs> things worked and what kind of trouble I could get into, and then was making stuff that was working and sounding good. The thing that I think is special about them is simple. I mean, I, it's just that it, there is a difference between a, a player telling an engineer what he wants and, and a player going out and playing in real high stress situations and really like experiencing what's not working and what is. I would go into my hotel room sometime on tour, you know, like with a little butane powered soldering iron, like, you know. So uh, ultimately, 
the things got they got over the years they became they got tuned up more and more and, and, and their applications got you know better and better understood and I was building custom circuits for lots of people so like one guy says hey, I want you to build me a preamp that's going to make my fretless bass just go Mwah, like crazy or whatever you know or another guy says you know that I want you to build me a preamp that really cuts through I really like this 1.8 kilohertz you know frequency really works da, 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 da. so over the years I kind of figured out like well this works that works these are the important features these aren't and you know for, and coming at it from a musical standpoint I just built a circuit that I felt like was the right thing. When I met David Yates, who's, you know, David's like a, you know, he's, I don't know how many patents he's got his name on, it's just crazy. I mean, it's like, you can, it's like, you look at the book of patents and it's like war and peace. He's got so many of them. <laughs> he's really a brilliant guy and, um, and a great bass player. And once we got partnered up, then I got to really learn how the big boys do it. You know, like, how do you really get how do you get stuff manufactured? How do you design testing strategies? How, you know, yada yada, all the stuff that I had no clue about. You know, he, he knew about it. So we were able to really bring it into its current form, which is which is a much higher level design than what it was at first. Nice. So, <laughs> yeah, I mean that's that's as, about as short as I can. <laughs> I can make it. No worries. Can you just uh, really quick show us what the layout is? Because sometimes people see those on Federa's. I have completely like... forgotten. I don't even know. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. It's, I do know. Well, actually, so this isn't the, this is not the Federa standard preamp or the Federa custom preamp. So this is the this is the flex core, which is what they use in their standard bases. Mm -hmm. And I put it in here because it has uh, they, they, one option that the flex core gives that the Federa preamp doesn't is a, uh, a dual mid range, a high high mid and low mid mm -hmm. separately. The Federa accomplishes the same thing in a different way, a similar thing in a different way. Uh, but if it were Federa preamp, then what it would be. Most, mostly the same. You know, you've got a stacked vol master volume, master tone mm -hmm. control, and you have a pickup blend that uh, just works like a normal pickup blend does. And you, you know, put it in the middle, and both pickups are all the way on. You've got a bass, mid range, and treble circuit, you know, and then you've got, you know, the switches on a Federa have various functions. Usually, when you have three switches, the top one is a coil tap, mm -hmm. which is what this is. Uh, and this is usually an active passive switch. This switch on the Federa preamp is assignable. It can be a kill switch, or it can be assigned to switch the mid-range frequency. Oh. Um, so you can, you, just depending on how they set the jumpers internally, they can have it do either one. And I also set it up so that when the lowest mid-range is selected, the switch also switches the bass control. Because the bass control can be kind of high if you want it to be, and it gets in the way of the lowest mid-range sometimes, so that all, it shifts both of them down. I just tried, I mean, I just, honestly, man, I just tried to make it useful. I, I didn't, I, I didn't have any kind of a marketing plan in, in mind, and I certainly didn't envision it becoming kind of what it became, but, you know, there are a lot of products out there that, that, that perform really, really well in the music store, you know, I mean, people sit down and they're like, oh my God, this is amazing, but, I mean, I found that, that for me anyway, by and large, when I get out on the gig, it's like, wow, this bass control, I need some more bass, and I turn up the bass, and it's like, wow, I just, I turned up the mud, you know, I didn't, yeah. I don't, I want, just want my bass to sound bigger. I don't want all this other crap, you know? And it's there, oftentimes. Now, I, I, I'm not, it, that's just my reaction to it. I mean, everybody has their own thing. And, and I'm not trying to criticize. I know, I know a lot of, you know, competitors, and they're friends of mine, and they're great guys, and they're and brilliant engineers, and I, I don't want to take anything away from them. I'm just, it just doesn't work for me. Mm -hmm. So I, I just built a circuit. That, and the big downside for me, from a commercial standpoint, is you don't really appreciate what it does until you've taken it on a gig and played it. Mm -hmm. And a lot of guys say that to me. I like, mean, I really wasn't that impressed when I listened to it, like, in my bedroom. But when I got out on a gig, and I was like, oh, my God. You know? So it, it's, that's just how it works. And I, I've always put that at the, that's always been the priority for me. I just, I just really don't care about, you know, about, I'm, well, I mean, I care about selling preamps, but, you know, but it, I, I'm not, it's just not, I just I, I want to sell preamps because they're good, not because I've manipulated quality the market. over quantity. Yeah, you know what I mean. So that's for me. That's how it, that's how it is. So that's why I'm poor. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys.